basically what they would do is have, uh, the more elaborate the braid is, like you see here, some are very simple, some are very elaborate. Um, the more elaborate the braid is, the, um, the more higher up in the social status they were. So it signified their social status. Um, and that's where it all started from. Then you go down uh, near the bottom of the page, where it talks about braiding salons. Um, there is a natural hair stylist uh, license that you can get. But natural hair styling means that they use, no, they use no chemicals and they don't alter the natural curl or coil pattern of the hair, which includes blow dry. You can't mm -hmm. shampoo, you can't blow dry, you can't alter the curl of the, uh, of the natural curl or coil of the hair. So, and on the next slide I'll tell you a little bit more about the natural hair cultures license that you can get here in Michigan. But remember, natural hair styling is very big right now, it's very popular, we're trying to get away from, we haven't done many relaxes or perms in I don't know how long because we don't, um, you know, everybody's going more natural, more healthy, okay? So that's what a natural hairstyle is. You go down to the bottom of the last paragraph, third line, it says, the braided patterns can last up to three months. Now, of course, it depends on how um, oily your hair is or how dry the hair is, how, how you maintain it. I know the book says that um, uh, it, it's best to do uh, every four to, or six to eight weeks, I believe. Yeah, six to eight weeks is preferred, but um, it can last for test purposes and study guides, it can last up to three months. So this is not in your book, but like I said, natural hair culturist license is the <coughs> license for the state of Michigan. When we get into laws and rules, we'll talk a little bit about that too. But as a 400 hour program, they have to take a, a practical and a theory exam. Um, and it's just braiding. Again, you cannot, since it's a natural hair, um, if you are at a braiding salon where that's all they're doing, all the people in there are just natural hair, hair culturists licensed. They're not licensed as a cosmetologist. They're just doing braiding, then that's all they can do. They can't even have a shampoo bowl in there. They can have a sink. So your clients have to come in with a hair shampoo. They can put product on. They can't blow it out. They, because when you blow it out, you're going to be changing the curl of the coil pattern. So they tried at one time to try to get the state to allow them to have a shampoo bowl because clients were coming in with dirty hair and they wanted to shampoo it and blow it out. And they said no, because you'll abuse it. They figured you know, people would, if you did the shampooing, then pretty soon people were coming in for a chemical or a color. So they, the state said no. Um, I'll kind of describe each one of those in a second. Another thing, I got a couple of uh, um, pictures and a short video on the next two things. Um, and we're still on page um, you can take bundles of hair and you can separate. Sometimes they're just doing it to get the loose ends. Sometimes they're doing it to blend colors. You know, so that's what a hackle is. And you can see it's, it looks like a bed of nails. You know, it looks very, it is dangerous if you're not careful about how you do it. You can hit knuckles and stuff like that too. So that's a hackle. Uh, the uh, drawing board it sandwiches the hair in between after you use the hackle. The little tiny little. Like a pet drug. Yeah, you're right. Now they're putting those satin strands, um, which we'll pull them out um, um, tomorrow. The satin strands. And then they, but they can do it after they use the hackle. And it keeps it from getting snarled up and tangled. You just pull them out when you need them. see where we've done the gonna come. So what I've done here, once I've created, I've added the second strand of hair, I take a little bit from that strand and I keep it aside. This is what becomes, think of the branch of a tree and that's why we call it tree bread weave. So you're actually branching out strands of hair. When I turn my hand again the second time of the corner row, I take another little branch and I click it away. Now I'm thinking of how much hair I've got in my fingers, so I bring another strand of hair and I add it in again. <coughs> and I bring out a little branch again. I take more hair again, I add it in. So 
put it down. No branch out. And no herring. Put it down. Mm -hmm. oh. And that And that's your process. Now the size of hair you decide to bring out is going to affect your overall results because then you're going to have a lot, a lot of hair coming out in the form of the wave or you're going to have less hair coming out. There are options for both of them. Your client might like the hair to be very, very flat and that means don't put a lot of hair out. Oh, they might like a really full head. I've been doing a lot of videos about ad revenue, so and now videos have like two to three ads. Every single, if you click on the screen again, like move the mouse, every single that yellow that, one, yeah, that's an ad. So okay. try and finish this strand so you see what this looks like. And then I will carry on. I just want to show you the kind of of pattern that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Maybe the f how she finishes off the end. And finish off the rest. You're just going to still take branches, like little pieces. And once you finish your nut off, I'm going to see stronger. So this is what we're going to be working on. And once I've finished it completely, you'll be seeing the finished look. Keep watching and thank you. How long do we say it takes? About two hours. Four hours. Four hours. Must be faster. So what I've done is basically blow dry the hair. And I've combed it through. Throughout history, wigs were status symbols. Hence the term big wig. One early wig making technique was to use goat skin to simulate a scalp. And then hook hair into it with an embroidery needle. Today, animal skin is no longer used. These days, wigs can look so real that no one would notice. To make a custom wig, a wig master measures the client's head from all angles because heads come in many shapes and sizes. He wraps her head in cellophane, twisting it just under the earlobes. Next, he sticks filament tape all over the cellophane wrap. He layers it four times to make a cast. He lifts the tape and cellophane cast from her head and places it on a wig block, a head shape made of canvas or wood. Using a grease pencil, he traces around the cast, making a pattern of the client's hairline on the wig block. The wig master then cuts pieces of plain blue paper. He pins it on the wig block within the pattern lines. The paper will prevent light from reflecting into his eyes as he works. Now, he places a large sized polyester and cotton lace on the block and cuts it to the penciled outline. He pins a finer lace from front to back, pleating the edges with pins. He pulls open a drawer full of real and fake hair, and it's hard to tell the difference between them. He chooses a tail of synthetic hair labeled Venetian Blonde. Pieces of pink and orange synthetic hair will be blended into the Venetian Blonde tresses to create dramatic highlights. This is the tool for the job. It's a giant comb with rows of sharp steel teeth. It's called a hackle. The wig master places the Venetian blonde synthetic hair between the teeth of the hackle. 
and sets the bright pink and orange locks on top. Now he repeatedly drags the hair through the hackle. He loses some strands in the comb, but those are usually the weaker ones. This is called hackling, and the action gets progressively more vigorous. He twists and twirls the tail as he pulls it through the hackle. This is actually dangerous work. One wrong move, and he could pierce his hand on the barbed comb. Once the hair is blended, he cuts it in two. Then he presses the hair into little metal pins on a leather holding card. The pins on a top card interlock with the bottom one. He pulls hair out of the holding cards a few strands at a time. With a small needle that looks like a fishing hook, he knots the strands into the lace beginning at the nape. This is called ventilating. It's very similar to rug hooking. In fact, it may be why toupees are often referred to as rugs. Ventilating is labor intensive. He spends a minimum of 50 hours knotting the thousands of strands that it takes to make a wig. Partway into the job, he comes out any tangles and flounces the hair to make sure it moves naturally. Wigs for film and TV are usually made by hand rather than machine because the result is more authentic looking. Because the camera tells all, the wigs need to look as real as possible. He weaves the front of the wig one strand at a time because the front hairline always gets the most scrutiny. Now it's time for the fitting and the transformation. The wig needs a little styling. And he trims the ends. He cuts away the extra lace and voila, she's ready to let her synthetic hair down and get into her new role. So that last clip was me on the lab floor with the advanced students while they went over foil placement, ombre, and bilage. And I wanted to share some advice with those that are interested in being an instructor. Um, one is to stay observant, two is to lend a hand, and three, don't do your classwork unless it's your designated day. So one, to be observant, I would tell you to remember that you're there to train to be an instructor so you want to observe how the instructors are running their classroom how they hold the classroom together how they are putting together lesson plans test quizzes class assignments class activities powerpoints all that you want to know like how did they find out that this was effective how did they find out that the students were actually retaining the information how did they find out like what to put in a powerpoint and what not to or when they collect videos like what's interesting that they know that the students will want to watch those types of things also to lend a hand that means like to help the students help the instructor clean if you bored child um helping students like just going around and asking them like hey you need help with that or you know just sharing your advice or your opinion on working in the salon and try to stay positive you can share the truth of the industry but you can also stay positive like there are some negatives in working in the beauty industry but always flip it and just make it into something positive um the third thing is do not do your classwork unless it's your designated theory day I say that because you can get bored when the students are doing their theory or lab work and they don't need any help. You're like, oh, that's a good time to uh, pull this book out to, you know, do some homework or get caught up. Do not do that. 
we have designated three days for a reason and that's when you want to do your homework you should be doing your homework outside of the classroom on your own time because like i said you are there to be observing you are there to basically train to be an instructor you don't want to look like you are preoccupied or busy doing homework when you could really be observant to all the other students and the instructors and you want to look as available as possible so i hope that you guys enjoyed this i hope i I wasn't too long-winded. I cannot wait to see you guys later this week. See ya.